Hey everyone, I'm Black Lightning. How many genders are there? Right now, the dominating sentiment on YouTube is that there are only two genders. I know this video is going to get to me a lot of hate, but try to hear me out first. People are going to have their own opinion on what gender means to them. I understand that, and I want to share my opinion on the subject. Sex refers to our biological bodies. Gender is our psychological state of identity. The genders, man and woman, are highly correlated with the two sexes. Most societies, if not all, create man and woman genders based on our sex. If you're male, then you usually take on the societal norms that are expected of a man, such as being tough and dominant. If you're female, then you usually take on the social norms that are expected of a woman, such as being nurturing and submissive. The problem here is that men could be nurturing and submissive and women could be tough and dominant. What it means to be a man or a woman varies between and within societies. This hasn't changed. I do believe our brain structure play a big role in our gender identity and our hormones influence our behavior, but so does your social experience. There's a unique combination depending on the person and the result of this is your gender identity. Gender is a social construct with biological and social influences. The biological aspect explains why some people are born with a high probability of being transgender. These people are altering their sex characteristics so their body aligns with their perceived gender. I used to think gender had to be completely biological, but that's not the case. I'll link a source that created a biological, psychological, and social gender model. Despite the limitations it mentions, the source does provide interesting information and I recommend people reading it if gender is something that interests you. I will no longer make distinctions between biological and social genders. They're just genders. Sex is determined at birth and gender is something you figure out later on in life. Due to us valuing individualism in America, people can believe they don't fit the definition of man or woman and say they are an alternative gender. So I'm going to pick various views on gender and see if I can argue for more genders. Think of this as a thought experiment. The first one is gender is the same as sex, so that's why there are two genders. This one is fundamentally flawed because it's ignoring the social phenomenon behind the word gender. There's no biological reason why men and women behave the way they do in various societies. Your biology gives you the framework for all kinds of behavior, but it's society and your environment that shapes you to behave a certain way within your unique range. Obviously, the gender equals sex viewpoint doesn't leave room for more genders unless you add intersex people or feminine males and masculine females as new sexes. Nature isn't discreet, but we decided there should be two sexes. Most people will not budge on that, so two genders it is. However, if you add a new sex, you could add a new gender in this viewpoint. There are people who use gender and sex interchangeably out of not knowing gender is different from sex. These people are the average person in America who may not have invested time on this subject. Don't be quick to label people who do this as bigots. For this next part, let's think of gender as societal norms and roles in a society. There's a slight problem here. What it means to be a man or a woman in America has expanded to encompass every gender expression you can think of. It's no longer as specific and rigid as it once was decades ago. And these other genders would have made sense back then. Men are like this, and women are like that. Oh, you don't fit those definitions? Then you're not a man or a woman. But society would force you to one of those genders based on your sex. You're definitely male or female if you're not intersex, but there would have been room for more genders. Now, being a man or a woman could mean anything. It removes the need for there to be more than two genders to some people. In order to make alternative genders work is to make the genders, man and woman, simple again. That isn't happening due to the progressive push that men and women are not defined by rigid and limited definitions. There is this push from conservatives to live a traditional life and put men and women in those previous specific gender roles. And with that, new genders could exist. There will be pushback because traditional life only includes two genders, in America at least. In other societies, there are genders other than man and woman. The Balkan sworn virgins are females who stay virgins and wear men's clothing and take on their roles. You also have indigenous people in North America with a third and fourth gender called two-spirit. Feminine men and masculine women. You might say that's just being transgender. But remember, they are going by their own societal norms and societal expectations of their genders. Yours may not apply in other societies. 
There isn't some universal definition of what a man and woman is, and if a society leaves room for there to be more genders, based on their societal gender norms and roles, then that's what happen. In this context, you can have many more genders than just two. Not infinite, but a lot depending on the roles and expectations a particular society has given their genders. Now let's think of gender as if it's on the masculinity to femininity spectrum. This one, people can quite easily say there are two genders, however you could at least argue for a third gender. Let's say being more masculine than feminine makes you a man and being more feminine than masculine makes you a woman. What do we call those who are ambiguous or somewhere in the middle? You might say this new gender is referring to the two genders, so there's still two genders. Not necessarily. If you're going from point A to point B and you stopped in the middle, you just created a third point. You can take juice and mix it with Mountain Dew and you will get a unique mixture. A black man and a white woman will produce a racially mixed child. You can't say the result of these mixtures are completely one thing or the other. Whether you want to see this as a third gender or not depends on your persuasion really. It makes sense for there to be at least a third gender under this context. I'm going to talk about one more perspective on gender before I give my concluding thoughts on this subject. Let's think of gender as a social identity. Obviously, biology play a part in this, but the social aspect take a higher priority in your identity. This fits in our modern day society because we value individualism. We no longer have specific roles we must fulfill, and we can be anything we put our minds to within reason. How a person identifies themselves is something only they can answer. Because a man and woman encompasses all gender expressions in America, some people might want an identity that informs you on what exactly they are. I'm genderqueer, agender, bigender, or androgynous. These have specific meanings and no one can really invalidate someone else's gender experience. You can make the argument that many of these new genders are unnecessary and I'd agree with that. While I personally don't see the need to make a new gender for every nuanced gender expression, people have found value in them. I'm avoiding the really silly tumbler genders. Hydrogender, meaning your gender shares qualities with water. Glass gender, which is a gender that is very sensitive and fragile. Sir gender, which is a gender that is 100% one gender, but with more of another gender added on top of that. You can identify as whatever you want, but many of these genders have very silly descriptions. It makes you wonder if a troll infiltrated Tumblr and added these genders. I believe most non-binary people don't identify as these genders, except for teenagers trying to figure things out. In this context, you can have many genders, but not infinite. There are so many genders you can make using a masculinity to femininity spectrum of gender expression to make new genders without them overlapping. Sure, a person could come up with something that isn't masculine nor feminine, yet reasonable, and that could open the floodgates for more genders, but that hasn't happened yet. Reading the definitions of the genders I've found, a lot of them are some unique combination of masculine and feminine expressions. In this context, gender is your self-identity. You can be the most masculine woman on the planet, but you can still say you're a woman. This person is their own woman. Gender expression is a way for you to express your gender identity, but it's the identity that comes first. People are picking a label that resonates with them the most. Me personally, my gender is trap and my pronouns are whatever you want me to be. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't care about labeling myself in regards to gender or sexuality, but there are people who do and that's okay. In my opinion, what gender means to us is a philosophical subject and there isn't an objective right or wrong answer. Unless your position isn't gender equals sex, then I can't really take a hard opposition to your stance. To answer the question, how many genders are there, it depends on how you define gender. You can have just two, you can have a few, or a lot, but definitely not infinite. You can try to create a model to support infinite genders, but you end up creating genders that repeat other genders, and genders that are nonsensical or impractical to express. Just to clarify, we can potentially make genders that seemingly go on into infinity, but not infinity itself. Don't let other people discourage you, be yourself. Since we value individualism, let people identify as whatever gender they want. Of course, if these people are switching gender labels every week, then perhaps they're doing this for attention-seeking reasons. If these people stick to a label for a much longer time and are genuine about it, then there's no problem here. 
As long as there is no harm involved, live and let's live. I don't consider the research on biological influences on gender to be complete. Everything must stay falsifiable and I'm always open to new information. Whether there is or isn't biological influences for alternative genders, we shouldn't shame those who identify as a gender other than a man or a woman. These people found value in these identities and they are able to function in society like everyone else. I understand those who are saying there are only two genders and are being reasonable about it. But there really isn't anything stopping there from being more than two genders other than I disagree with it. You might say we're using science but current research leaves room for further exploration. Most people are satisfied with identifying as a man or a woman to keep it simple or because it came naturally to them. That's fine but there are people who want to ponder for much longer about what it is they are experiencing. This topic poses an existential question worth exploring. Who am I? Gender is not everything, but it's a significant part of you amongst others. We can joke about the Tumblr genders, but behind all of this are people trying to find themselves. Many of us can relate to that, and we do this at our own pace and depth. As we all challenge ourselves and grow, this breeds new questions we want answers to. Don't be too quick to shut a topic down. Stay curious, keep a healthy dose of skepticism, and keep growing. Anyways, thanks for watching and take care.